Hi everyone, it's Lindsay and I am so happy to be back to see you all again today. Now I have a really cool story I want to share with you. It's about a miracle that I personally experienced and some other things that happened around that. So for those of you who are brand new, my name is Lindsay and I share Bible stories and other stories in order to help you grow as a disciple. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, please stick around. So now today's story, it doesn't come straight out of the Bible. It actually comes straight out of my life experience. Um, but I, so I left Australia a few weeks ago, nearly a month ago now, and I went to Papua New Guinea as part of the PNG for Christ evangelistic campaign. So what this was is there was over 2,000 different locations across the country of Papua New Guinea, which is an island nation just north of the east coast of Australia. And there was, yeah, 2,000 different places where people were preaching to pretty much the entire population of PNG. And I went to one of those 2,000 locations. So where I ended up preaching was in the Eastern Highlands um, and near a place called Kainantu, which is on the road between Leh and Garoka, if anybody knows. And um, so I was a little bit south of there, staying at the Summer Institute of Linguistics, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, missionary base in the world with you know, a few hundred missionaries who have come across to translate the Bible into the hundreds of different native Papua New Guinean languages, not dialects, but languages, separate language groups. And so I was staying there at the missionary compound. I was very blessed to be um, in that environment. And it was a very, very short five minute drive away from our preaching location in the Ayura Valley. So in the Ayura Valley, there are about four different language groups. And across Papua New Guinea, most people speak Tok Pidgin, which is kind of like a half English type of language that is very, very simplified. And so because there are so many hundreds, nearly a thousand different um, native languages across PNG, in order to unify them, um, they, they were taught over the past hundred or so years, a very simplified, uh, form of English called Tok Pigeon. And so that's where I had to go and preach with, um, a group of people who could speak or understand Tok Pigeon as well as their own native languages. And so I knew that most people there would not be able to understand English very well. Um, uh, and so I prayed for the few months, um, leading up to going on this trip, I was praying, Lord, I don't know if I need the gift of tongues or for them to have the gift of interpretation or something, but please help them to understand the words that I'm about to preach. And so... I, I believe that God answered that prayer. I had reports back towards the end of my time there that the people were able to understand the words that I was saying. And I, I was praying this on a regular basis, um, but I also did my best to simplify my English to the level that they could understand and rely more on storytelling than I did on, you know, over... <laughs> you know, bombarding them with various different Bible texts because most of them are illiterate and they don't have a Bible and they can't read the Bible. And so instead of going through and, and telling a whole bunch of um, different Bible texts, I relied more on stories to communicate a message, just like Jesus did in the par parables. Um, anyway, so those are some of the surrounding parts of the experience that I had in PNG. Um, and... I just wanted to share specifically some miracles that took place. So not only did people, you know, were they able to understand most of what I was saying, um, but there were some other things that happened. Now, a bit of backstory about me, because this is important for this miracle, is that I am pretty sure I was born with this problem in my body where I have a wonky hip. Okay. Um, and if you were to see my x-rays, which I'm not going to be putting them into this video, I would prefer to just upload the video after I record it. But imagine just 
an x-ray of a pelvis and it's meant to be you know two nice even hips but my hips are kind of rotated like this and so there's a bit of a just a distortion and that has it affected the way that I move the way the way that the muscles sit um and has given me pain all throughout my body tension throughout my body um, I've seen chiropractors and doctors for many, many years, spent thousands upon thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars at um, medical appointments, only for them to tell me that I cannot have surgery, I cannot have this problem fixed, and it's just going to be an ongoing pain for me to manage for the rest of my life. Wah woohoo! Um, and so it's actually been getting worse in the past few months. Um, where I've had more and more pain um, and almost to the point where I was in so much pain that I nearly didn't go to Papua New Guinea. Now most people don't actually know that. The day before I had to fly out I was in quite a lot of pain and I knew I wouldn't be able to see anyone medical for the next three weeks while I was away so I was really quite concerned. But I pushed through and I went anyway and I just prayed God you're gonna have to help me manage this while I'm away. And so the first week of the three weeks of traveling um we uh, so I traveled as a part of a team from my university so a bunch of us went to uh locations nearby each other to preach and so I had a few lecturers and a few other classmates and yeah we, we went and preached in um nearby locations to each other and so when we went uh we spent a couple of days traveling from one town to the next and kind of just visiting for a few days in each place and eventually on the Friday so on the sixth day of that uh, first week we finally made it to our preaching location um, which I just described to you a moment ago and so when we arrived at our preaching location um, in the afternoon we managed to find our way to the place that we would be sleeping and when I entered the room that I would be sleeping I immediately could smell mold and now for me I used to live in the Solomon Islands as a mission kid for two and a half years and when we lived there there was mold because it's a tropical environment and I was sick all of the time constantly sick really 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 bad my mum could not wait to get me out of there and bring me back to Australia because there was just no way for me to be feeling well. I clearly have had just a few different medical issues throughout my life um, that I've been needing to manage. And so one of them was this, you know, reaction to mold. And so my nose started running. I was um, within 24 hours just exhausted from constantly blowing my nose and from feeling itchy and my sinuses just inflamed and breathing was beginning to get difficult. And so, a few hours before I had to preach my first sermon, so the day after we arrived there, I I was just suffering quite a bit. And so I asked my lecturer and one of my classmates who was staying in the same house with us, I said, hey, can you guys please pray for me because I need to preach in a couple of hours and I'm just exhausted and I don't know how I'm going to be able to preach with my sinuses inflamed like this from the mold allergy. And so they're like, yeah, we can pray for you. And they prayed for me, very short, simple prayers. And as soon as they did, I noticed that I immediately felt better. Like everything was cleared up and I felt fine. And in that moment, I was like, oh, yeah, praying for the sick. I remember that's a thing in the Bible. It's not something that I have seen a lot, certainly not recently and certainly not in my local church location or just it's just not been something that I've seen much of. Um, back at home and so it was a really interesting moment and it jolted me <laughs> into you know remembering what the the bible had to say about praying for the sick and before I had even come out to PNG a friend of mine had called me up and just said something that um piqued my interest she said hey Lindsay I think you're gonna get a lot out of this trip to Papua New Guinea um I, I think you're just, yeah, gonna, gonna get a lot out of it. And it's not something that she would just say of her own volition. And so I asked, where did that come from? And, <coughs> and she said, I don't know. I just, you know, felt like I was impressed to say that. 
um, and she's a Christian, and so sometimes when people say things like that, I, I, you know, prick my ears up and I listen and I tuck away what they've said um, and just mull over it and see what God will do next. And so she said that a few days before I went to PNG, and I had this expectation in my heart that, wow, there's going to be a lot of interesting things that are going to happen in PNG, which, like, they would have been either way, but it was just preparing me with expectation. And so now with this expectation in my heart that I'm going to get a lot out of this trip, um, and now that my sinuses have cleared up after my lecturer and my classmate prayed for me, I started to think, well, what about my hip? There's a really painful hip that I need help with. It just has caused pain for my entire life and it's you know, it cost me a lot of money and there's no hope medically for me in the current system. And so I began to explain to both my lecturer and to my classmate about my condition. And I sheepishly asked them, would you be able to pray for that as well? And I was sheepish about it, even though I'm a Christian, even though I'm like studying and training to be a pastor, I was still sheepish about it because it's not something that... I've seen very much of as far as healings in Australia, as well as I've been praying for God to miraculously heal my hips um, and my body for years and years now myself. I actually found um, where I wrote down my diary about four or five years ago that I had faith that God could heal my body and nothing's happened in these four or five years that I've been specifically praying for this and I would kind of reasoned it away and thought well maybe this is like the thorn in Paul's side that he prayed for three times and God said stop praying about it my grace is sufficient for you and I thought well maybe God will just help me get through this for the rest of my life and I'll just be suffering for the rest of my life but he'll give me the strength each day to get through or whatever and I just kind of reasoned it away in that way And so when I was asking these people to pray for me, I was a bit sheepish, like, "Mm, maybe God will do it, maybe he won't. And they said, yeah, look, we can definitely pray for you. In fact, we can do an anointing on your body. And now I've never seen an anointing. And it's not something that in the Seventh-day Adventist Christian faith community, it's not something that happens a great deal. I I now know that in some other Christian communities it happens a lot more frequently, um, but it's not something that happens like all the time in the Seventh-day Adventist community. And so I hadn't seen it before and I was really glad that my lecturer was there because he was able to give us a, a short Bible study off the top of his head about why we do anointings, um, what it it means and and how Jesus healed people as part of his ministry and claiming the the promises in the Bible and things like that. And so after he did this brief Bible study, um, which actually I'm going to share with you just some of the things that I recall him sharing with us. He said that, first of all, healing was one major part of Jesus's ministry. Um, The next thing is in the prayer, the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, it starts off by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we pause there and he asked, is it God's will in heaven that our bodies be broken and painful and sore? And the response was obviously not. Like when we go to heaven, our bodies will be whole and complete. And so with that in mind, it's actually God's will for what is to happen in heaven to actually be brought to earth and to be done on earth and that our bodies be healed on earth as well. And we can pray that and claim that in the authority of Jesus' name, right? We have authority as Christians to claim these promises. It's not something that we have to ask or beg for. It's something that we can claim with authority. Um, And there were a few other things, like um, later in the New Testament, I'm not sure off the top of my head if it's James or somewhere else, um, where it says... 
that if anyone is sick, they should be brought to the elders to have their, you know, to, to be anointed and their sins will be forgiven. They will be healed and their sins forgiven. And so <coughs> armed with a few of these um, Bible verses and principles, um, we went into the anointing. So we found a bottle of olive oil in the guest house where we were staying and cracked it open and um, my lecturer and my house, uh, my my classmate prayed for me. They anointed me with oil, which oil in the Bible is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The oil in of itself is not special, magical or anything. It's just a representation of the Holy Spirit, um, which we are inviting to help with this healing in this moment. And so they just kind of put a little bit on my forehead and it kind of just drizzled down a little bit and started laying hands on me and praying for me just simple prayers like god we invite you to heal Lindsay right now and after they'd both prayed for a moment uh, my lecturer asked me did you feel anything different and i said no not really and so he said well i feel impressed for you to stand up and i'll just place my hand on your lower back which um, so part of my hip being twisted, there's scoliosis in the lower spine and then there's the hips all rotated and everything. And so the spine is actually like the core of the issue. And so he said, I'll just place my hand on your lower back and we'll keep praying. And so they kept praying. And as I was standing there, all very hopeful and like trying as best I could to believe that not only does God want to heal me, but he can do it and he will do it. And I'm just like focusing and I noticed very, very softly, very gently in my body. First of all, my big toe on my right leg, which is the leg with the twist in the hip. My, my toe started to kind of just drop down by itself because it always has like an upward rotation. Um, and so the, the foot moved very softly, very gently, which was really interesting to me. I didn't expect that. And then after that, I felt super softly, super gently, all the muscles and the bones deep inside my body, just moving by themselves. Like God was in there doing surgery and moving things around softly, gently, slowly. And it was such an amazing feeling. And after the bones had moved, then I felt in my spine all the way up to my neck and to my head, just kind of like a lightness and things were just slightly rearranged. And it was such a cool feeling. And then after that happened, I, I shared that, you know, something did just change. And so I went and walked around the room a little bit. And because my muscles are just not used to the bone sitting in that way, I, I walked around and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm completely healed yet. I, I don't know. This just feels weird, but good. Um, I definitely felt something change. And so... They prayed for me again for another couple of minutes. Um, nothing else changed, um, but they also anointed my lips for preaching as well as part of that prayer, which I think really, really helped um, with the preaching overall. But after that, when we all parted ways, because it was late in the evening at that point, I went back to bed and I was just sitting in my bed and I was in a daze. And then I noticed as I was sitting with my knees up that my knees were actually the same height. Because usually in the past, one knee would always be about an inch lower than the others. When I was sitting in bed and I'd, I'd often just look at it with frustration going, oh, I just can't fix this. There's no way for me to fix my hip and rotate it so my legs are the same length. But now I could see that my... My legs are the same length, my knees are the same length, everything works better and I can walk in a straight line and not just be bumping into walls at all times. And so that night I was just so excited that my legs are the same length and I've been healed and I can actually function and walk around and not be in pain. And so, yeah, over the next few days I was just sharing this story with a few of the, the people who we were um, staying with, and it was really exciting. But then a few days later, so this is this is where this was a miracle that was initially just for me, but also it had an impact on other people. And I hope it has an impact on you and your faith as well by hearing this story. But it had a real tangible impact on the people that were coming to the program. 
and listening to the evangelistic sermons. So what happened was a couple of days later, um, we prayed for the cook who was cooking our meals at the guest house. She had been walking around with a moon boot on her foot and we discovered that she fell down the stairs 10 months ago and broke her leg and the the bone had since healed but she was still still in a lot of pain because of the nerves or the, the veins or whatever not sitting correctly in her body and so she was hobbling around cooking our meals with the moon boot on and we offered can we pray for you and she said sure go for it so she sat down we prayed for her and a few minutes later she was up and about took the moon boot off didn't have to use her walking stick anymore and she was pretty happy about that and she was like wow what's in this olive oil stuff like I want to take it home and give it to my mom who's got arthritis or whatever and we're like oh it's not magical like we need to teach you how this is all meant to work biblically um but <laughs> anyway so she was excited and she went back to the people who she was friends with who were coming along to the meetings and shared with them what happened to her you know she's free now she's all you know without pain and able to move about freely and she shared this story with her friends and they were like whoa can we can you get the pastors to come and pray for us as well because we've got all these different problems because in png it's a third world country and they don't really have a great deal of access to medical care and so there's so many people there just suffering and so the day after we prayed for that lady we went to morning devotions um at the preaching site pretty early in the morning and we asked the local pastors and elders hey is there anything that we can pray for for the people who are coming along we've noticed that there's a lot of people sick um because they're not staying in the greatest conditions and they said yeah there's a lot of people who are sick and we can pray for them and so at the end of the morning devotion talk we invited anyone who wanted to to come forward for prayer and then we were shocked and surprised when hundreds of people came forward and it was basically everyone who was there at the time <laughs> almost nobody was left behind now at this we were a little bit shocked and didn't know what to do at first <laughs> because <laughs> We're like, there's only a couple of us and there's like a couple of hundred of them and they all want their, you know, ailments to be prayed for and to be laid hands on and healed and things. And so we decided, okay, what we'll do is we'll come back in a little while and we will set up a prayer clinic. And so we came back a little while later and, uh, well, initially we had like a big group prayer for anyone who was experiencing, you know, specific uh, problems with coughing, fever, any of the sickness that was going around in general. But then we said, anyone else who wants to be prayed for one-on-one -on -one later will we'll come back. And so we did. And I had my lecturer do a, a teaching from the front over the microphone, just like he had shared with me and my classmate before they had anointed me. And so did a bit of a teaching about what the Bible has to say. And then while he was doing that, I was organizing the local pastors and elders and getting a space set up so we could have two pastors and elders buddied up at a time to pray for one person at a time, to lay hands and to anoint with oil and things like that. And so we did that. And it was really interesting because the local pastors had never seen anything like this before. Um... It's something that you really need to see firsthand um, and be discipled in, in order to, you know, know about it, know what to do, anything like that. Um, we know that Jesus did ministry and then he had his 12 disciples following him around and trying things out. And then after a while of having them try things out, he sent them out to pray for others, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to share the gospel, all that type of thing. And he sent them out two by two. And then they came back and shared their experiences of what, you know, what they uh, went through. And so <clears throat> there is this really important part of showing and then doing. And so as we set up the space to pray for people, I noticed that my lecturer was praying with uh, another pastor and I was praying with another pastor and the rest of the pastors and elders were just standing around not doing anything and I was at first a little bit 
shocked and concerned and wondering what are they doing why why aren't they praying for people but then it occurred to me they've never seen this before and so I waved them over to where I was laying hands and praying for people and I showed them and I, I talked them through it step by step what was happening and then I would have like after I showed the example I would have them try and do the same thing and little by little they were getting the hang of it to the point where later on when some more elders turned up to be a part of the prayer team I had the others who I had just taught how to do this I had them now talk through the next person about what they needed to do and teach them um, and so we had this whole production line of discipleship going on and a few hours later we prayed for at least 40 or 50 people and we were in the hot sun so we needed to to take a break but it was a really amazing experience and, and some of the healings that I personally saw there was one lady where one of her eyes was completely white and cloudy and she had a whole bunch of different problems with her body so I prayed for her eye first and at first not a lot changed but there was a little glimmer of color that came through and so I prayed for the other things in her body and the pain in her other parts of her body went away straight away and then I kept praying for her eye and progressively her eye became more colorful more clear and she was able to see to some degree and then she left and then we prayed for other people and they had pain in their arms or pain in their chest or pain in their head or a lot of women had pain in their lower abdomen so around their ovaries and there was so many different types of pain that just went away straight away one man in his late 60s said that for the past 50 years since he was a teenager he's had a problem with asthma and so when I prayed for him laid hands on him the asthma went away immediately and he never had another problem with asthma again. And then I <laughs> learned that he was an elder as well. So I said, oh, okay, well, we've prayed for you now and you're an elder. Come join us and now you can pray for the next person. And so he learned how to pray as well. And so there was just so many amazing things that happened, so many different healings. And in fact, this didn't happen at my location, but... One of my other classmates at another location who had been sick for part of the time, we had him <clears throat> come and we, we laid hands on him and prayed for him, anointed him, and also gave him some medication <laughs> um, and sent him on his way. But the two occasions that I saw this this other classmate of mine, I felt very strongly to um, to share with him and the other classmate who he was staying with that you guys are very likely going to come across demon possession. This is part of what we can expect in doing ministry and especially in a place like PNG where everything is a lot more um, noticeable spiritually. And so I, I strongly uh, said this to one of my classmates twice, you are very likely going to experience demon possession. Do not be afraid to pray and cast out demons and I only learned the other day in class as we were discussing after we returned that he actually did experience this two times and he cast out demons of two different individuals which is really really cool um and yeah so we had all sorts of different experiences going on and I'm just so grateful that even though I have had suffering and pain in in my hip and my back and my whole body really throughout my life and the amount of pain and problems and money that it's cost me throughout my life and the fatigue and the headaches and everything that's come along with it. I'm so glad that God brought me to Papua New Guinea and that it was there that he healed me of this and that it not only you know, blessed me, but it ended up blessing so many other people, my other classmates, the people that we were there ministering to and preaching to, they got to experience God's healing power and God's love for them individually. It impacted one of my classmates to the point where he was now able to pray and cast out demons of others. And so there was so much deliverance that came out of a problem that I have been dealing with my whole life and that I had the courage to ask for God to heal at the time when he said, I was able to expect something good from him. And so I really hope that this encourages your faith. Um, I really encourage you, if there is anything on your heart right now that you really desire from God, to, to lay that before him and to pray about it. And he may or may not decide that now is the time to heal you or to, to set you free of whatever it is. 
but he will know about it and he already knows about it but he wants to know your heart and he does want to heal you he does want to set you free we know this from the promises in the bible i encourage you to go check out those promises go digging in the word for yourself so you know this so you can know god's heart and his character and his love for you this is my prayer my encouragement for you guys i really hope that this has blessed you let me know in the comments anything that you find really interesting or that has blessed you from today's video thank you so much i will see you guys again next time bye